नहीं नहीं थोड़ा कम पड़ चुका तीन महीने का टाइम लेते हैं हाँ टाइम जाएगा लेके रख लेके वन फोर्टी सिक्स नहीं लेके रख अपने पास रहेगा तो जैसा ये हुआ तो अपन चेंज कर देंगे ना बैटरी चार्ज बैटरी ये तो 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 कुटे मगर ये मगर शिक्षक मानुष होता है तो कुटे तो तो मगर शिक्षक कौन और बोला देशर का नहीं ते चला कर हाँ चला विचार है तो तो रिकॉर्डिंग पूर्ण भाई के नहीं यूट्यूब हो रहा है ना यूट्यूब हो रहा था स्टेम आता है Ada kilu tu lagi.
The event will begin at 6 p.m. sharp. From now, we have tea and snacks. Please enjoy. See you all at 6 p.m. Thank you.
and request everyone to please take their seats at the registration counter. I request everyone to please take their seats. We will begin shortly.
I request everyone to please be seated. A very good evening to our esteemed guests, speakers, engineers, industry people, ladies and gentlemen. I, Nimisha Narkar, your host for tonight, is honored to welcome you all to this wonderful event. But before we begin, it's my humble request to everyone present here to put your phones in silent mode so that we do not interrupt our speakers in between. Thank you so much for your cooperation and now without much ado, let's begin. Esteemed guests to join us, Engineer Manish Parikh, MEP Consultant and our eminent speaker for tonight. Engineer Mahesh Tendulkar, Concrete Technologist and our eminent speaker for tonight. Engineer Rangna Satam, Technical Member of ISSC and Coordinator for today's event. Engineer Sanjay Naram, Chairman ISSC Palghar Centre. Engineer Rohit Pandya, Regional Head, Technical Customer Solution, Ultratech Cement Limited. Engineer Rajiv Kumar, Head, Technical Building Product Division, Altertech Cement Limited. Dr. Randadi Kokne, President, Association of Consulting Civil Engineers, Palghar Chapter. And Architect Paresh Bharat, President, Architects and Engineers Association of Palghar. I request everyone to please maintain silence. Thank you. The skyline in Indian cities has changed drastically over the past 20 years, owing to the construction boom in metro cities. Areas that were predominated by low-rise residential compounds are now dotted by posher skyscrapers. High-rise buildings, as a result, can be categorized as a present and a future requisite. With changing times, necessities and concerns, Building tall remains to be a viable solution and the development of vertical cities in India deems such a solution to be true. This is exactly where our topic for today comes in. Technical lectures on requirement for high rise structures. But before we dive deep, and deep into the discussion for the same, it is important to seek the Almighty's blessing. <coughs> to make this event a blessed one, let's invoke Goddess Saraswati by kindling the lamp of knowledge and wisdom. For seeking her choices blessing, I request everyone on the dais to please come forward and light the lamp.
Before we proceed further, we would like to felicitate our esteemed guests. For the same, I request Engineer Jitendra Hartkar to please come forward and felicitate Engineer Manish Parekh. Engineer Parish Shatarkar to felicitate Engineer Mahesh Tendulkar. <laughs> Engineer Ganesh Award to felicitate Engineer Ramnath Satam. Engineer Vijay Gurov to felicitate Engineer Rohit Pandya. Engineer Rajesh Advankar to felicitate Engineer Rajiv Kumar. to felicitate architect Parish Kharat. members and committee members of various associations. It just goes on to say one thing, no matter what association, the aim is one. The aim is to enhance the technical knowledge and together work in harmony to create structures we are proud of. I now request engineer Rohit Pandya to felicitate our special guest members. Architect Pranav Deshmukh, Secretary Architects and Engineers Association of Palgar. Association of Palkar. I think he's not present over here, no problem. 
Architect Yogesh Matre, Secretary, Association of Consulting Civil Engineers, Palghar. Treasurer Association of Consulting Civil Engineers, Parker. Thank you so much, sir. I now request Engineer Ganesh Awad to felicitate our special guest members. Today we specially have with us Engineer Vicky Adhikari. I request him to please come forward. Mr. Dinesh Dubey, MCHI President. He's not here with us today, no problem. Architect Mahindra Kale, sir. Architect Sh Shrikant Yenge. It's my pleasure to have with us architect Parish Gharat also, uh, President Architects and Engineers Association of Palghar. Uh, he has graduated from, as Biyaj from JJ College of Architecture. His firm is Empire Architects and he's been practicing in this region for the last 10 years. Uh, I have a great pleasure in welcoming Dr. Nandadeep Kokane. Uh, he's the President, Association of Consulting Civil Engineers, Palghar Chapter. And now he has designed a, so many number of industrial, residential, commercial, resort projects in India and abroad. He also uh, does environment clearance, CRZ clearance projects for private as well as government projects. In 2006, I would like to inform you, he has completed PhD in Geomagnetic Radiation and Oral Science. Welcome sir. Uh, we are very grateful to engineer Bimal Acharya, uh, Zonal Head, Technical and Customer Solutions for Gujarat and Mumbai from Ultratech Cement Limited. He has a rich technical experience of more than 31 years, which includes working at various positions in renowned companies. Uh, he is a graduate in civil engineer and a postgraduate in management. Also welcoming engineer Rajiv Kumar, 
head technical building product division at that time. He has a rich technical experience of more than 26 years, which includes working at various positions in renowned companies. He's, uh, he has got a master's in civil engineering and post graduation in management. Also, extending my thanks to engineer Raghunath Satam, technical committee member and coordinator ISSC for this event. He has always been with us. He already always supposed, uh, supported us and he, his presence itself is a moral boost for us. I also want to specially thank our audience who have all found time and come here at attending the event. Thank you everyone. I am glad that ISSC has taken this initiative of organizing this lecture with a view to give the people in this industry a platform where they can share their ideas, discuss their concerns openly and effectively contribute to the growth of the nation. ISSC, since its inception, has worked to enhance the dignity of our profession and to define suitable norms for professional responsibility. Also, such an event is not possible without our sponsors. Sponsors don't need an introduction. Altatech Cement, everybody knows. Altatech Cement is the cement flagship company of Aditya Birla Group a building solutions powerhouse. Ultratech is the largest manufacturer of grey cement, RMC and white cement in India. Ultratech also, this is important to note, Ultratech also works to actively contribute to the social and economical development of the communities in which it operates. Thank you Ultratech for sponsoring this event. Coming to today's topic, high-rise structures. We have excellent speakers amongst us today will enlighten us on the aspects which will help us in arriving at practical, feasible, also economical solutions without compromising on safety. They will be covering their subjects now after this. Now, in India, now, now today, uh, when we say about high rises, uh, uh, all structures up to above 15 meters high we can in different areas of India. So let us say all structures above 15 meters high. These are high rises. Now, Today's topic, when we are talking about high rises, MEP and concrete technology for these structures, today is very important. But now we also have got UDSP earlier. Now all buildings, or mostly well, earlier ground plus 2, ground plus 3, so most of the buildings will be in high risk category today. So this topic for today is very futuristic as well as practical. It's something that we hope you will all be enriched after this seminar today. So I am also thankful to our ISCC team, Balgar, especially Paresh Unarkar and his team for organizing this. And uh, Palghar Center of ISCC welcomes you all to this event. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the warm welcome. Uh, we have with us today Mr. Dinesh Dubey, MCHI President. I request Engineer Ganesh Awad to please felicitate him. Now I would like Engineer Ramnath Satam to please come forward and enlighten our audience about the journey of Indian Society of Structural Engineers.
I will request uh, the people on the dais to sit on the front row so that they can able to see what it is. It was uh, born in 29th January 1997 with a 10 advisory trustees under the leadership of a great visionary, eminent engineer, late R.N. Nene. Started with the aim of it being something for the structural engineers, but later on we added to all civil engineers. Now it opened to the all civil engineers and all civil engineers are members. Now we have all over in membership of about 2000 plus. See, what are the aims and uh, object of the organization are that are listed here? But main again uh, motto of the organization is authorization like uh, authorities like MCGM, Wasai Virar, Mumbai Corporations and NMMC or Silco, etc. want some kind of an, uh, certifications uh, from the engineers. There are no certain guidelines available. Now fortunately there is the NBC is available and even the uh, this, uh, our uh, ISSC is having uh, some format for the structural engineers uh, for uh, for that they are, they are actually uh, format so that uh, they can be across uh, all body government bodies uh, see uh, otherwise what happen organization asking for the different uh, formats uh, and people are giving different uh, certifications that should not happen and that's why uh, recently ISSC format for the structural certificate implementation in UDPCR uh, now our next approach is similar amendment in MCGM uh, DCPR 32 uh, there should be uniform uh, standard format for the certification appealing to the all members over here the structural engineers or the civil engineer to follow the guidelines given uh, in uh, NBC or UDPC or even, even ISSC format uh, that can be uh, actually you should follow actually in that case these are the similar aims of that continuation then the ISSC civil engineering fields having structural design, detailing, computers, software, material technology and instruments, geotech, foundation engineering all bridge engineering and other related branches we have got a local centers Pune, Solapur, Aurangabad, Kolapur, New Mumbai and now that Palgar is also is a local centre. Having a student chapters in Sabo Siddhik, MIT Pune, Chameli Devi Group of Institution Indore, Vivekanand Society of Political Engineering Chembur and Vizitia and Adit Engineering Con Kakinada. This is recently added. We have got the different memberships, that is life memberships, corporate memberships, junior members, students members and total strength about 2000 plus all over India. See publications, we are publishing uh, quarterly journals, proceedings of the seminars and workshop. Appeal to the members to give their technical papers on the case studies and we will publish in our journal. This is what the quarterly journal we have. ISSC has got one website called issc.org.in This is all publications what we are giving that is available on the site and free to download reference link for the technical books are also available and certificate format to submit to the authorities also are available on the website. Uh, this is our newly developed website interface. Using this site you can become the members. We have to upload the documents and online payment also gateways also available on this website 
these are the events generally we are carrying out that lectures we carried out seminars workshops site visit interaction with students interaction of the professionals and academy and suggest research topics and this was actually the great achievement of the structural design adequacy certificate it is adopted by udpcr maharashtra that is after following with the uh, iscc committee with the udpcr committee so we are able to uh, introduce structural design adequacy certificate as well as the supervisory certificate in uh, udpcr this is what the format actually of that uh, udpcr for the structural as well as for this uh, site supervisor these are some of the events photographs actually iscc navi mumbai local center the student chapter at mit pune in workshop one day workshop one it is inside into the wind loading using the is875 by famous wind consultant dr suresh kumar um, at mukesh patel school of technology and management in villa park this is inauguration of an uh, student chapter at chameli devi group of indore this is also site visit when we are carried out for the sardar sarovar dam and the statue of unity in 19 2019 then lectures on roles and responsibility of structural auditor at visit year 9th august 2019 uh, this was a lecture on the concrete by mahesh tendulkar same at the uh, virar at 19 september 20 2019 This ISCC Palghar Local Centre inauguration, which is going to be carried out on the 17th December 2021. This ISCC Baramati Local Centre inauguration. This ISCC has uh, released two books recently by the hands of Dr. Bhuchu, uh, ex-principal of and visit here. One book it is of performance-based seismic design of the buildings, authored by structural consultant. Engineer Watsal Gokani and second book release for the high-rise building with strong damages and preventive measures. Indian contest authored by international wind consultant Dr. Suresh Kumar. This is recently with ISCC and IIA Mumbai lectures uh, organized one for the retrofitting of an RCC structure, 16 December 2022. These are the some hot topics we can just discuss. Structural audit, key structure form, professional ethics. What should we follow? See, lot of things we are taking from the society. It's now time to give back to the society, whatever possible. So I appeal to those who are. not member to become a member of and support the ISSC thank you for kind your kind attention thank you so much sir we also have with us engineer bimal acharya zonal head technical customer solution ultratech cement limited I request Engineer Vijay Gurav to please felicitate him. Engineer Ranath Satam to please come forward and award the membership of the newly joined engineers. Engineers Engineer Rajan Hatkar.
एंजिनियर तन्मय ठाकुर Engineer Sumit Joshi. Engineer Yayati Patel. technology and computers the basic aim is to construct safer buildings keeping in view the overall economics of the project to enlighten us more on the subject of MEP structure upon engineer Manish Parekh MEP consultant engineer Manish Parekh has been in the field of plumbing and sanitation since 1989 holding a plumbing license from municipal corporation of greater Bombay as a consultant he provides consultancy services right from planning, designing and execution of plumbing and sanitary pipelines in multi-story residential and commercial projects. He is also visiting faculty at various educational institutions. It must be noted that in two and a half years, Engineer Pare has conducted 64 training programs for Messrs. Supreme Industries. Indeed, it is our honour to have you here with us today. Over to you, sir. Good evening, everybody. I'm audible from here. Hello, sir. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, it's my pleasure to discuss about MEP part of high-rise building. Nowadays, I'm doing only high-rise building. This is a trend now. And uh, I'm just sharing my experience and knowledge about MEP, specifically plumbing. Why I'm telling about plumbing? I am into plumbing since last more than 30 years. But what I saw in new high-rise buildings, most of the critical part of the building, specifically in MEP, is uh, plumbing. Right? Now, as building goes high, complexity related to space and to accommodate all services increases. Now, when we talk about high-rise building, uh, the component of the building will be multiple basement. Basement 1, 2, 3, maybe steel, multiple podium, and now with the amenity E-deck level, refuse floor, service floor, multiple habitable floor, residential floor and terrace. Terrace is even nowadays habitable means uh, amenity area. But for you specifically, structural stability is the biggest challenge. How that we will discuss in next slides. And the biggest culprit is leakage. And to accommodate MEP services, there is a breakage in RCC part and core cutting. 
and most of the time without knowing you people. And I am actually doing outside. <laughs> These are challenges, right? So, in this challenge, in an urban context, the development of building is influenced by technology, varying needs of user and stringent norms. Stringent norms means nowadays in Mumbai, parking compliance is such that hardly any building is having, uh, not having stack or a puzzle parking or a rotary parking or a parking tower podium. In multiple podium, there are three stack parking. With this, it actually requires some space and it eats away space required for MEP routing. So, building become very complex in that regard. The building structure are varying from simple to a complex structure with very less open space around the building periphery. Building footprint is actually the typical floors are very small but basement or podium protruding out the building line. And when we talk about services routine, definitely there will be obstruction to accommodate all these services that we will discuss. With respect to services, we can term building as a complex structure and plot area is very small compared to the build up area of the building, as we discussed now. Wherein complexity of building accommodating parking space, electric substation, firefighting, water storage tanks. The biggest Space requirement in basement or a ground is nowadays for a firefighting tank. Minimum 75,000 to it may be two, two and a half lakh liter. And especially architects <laughs> are struggling to accommodate with, with given plot area available. And given all this complexity, we are compromising in MEP. Because what I understand is most ignored part of the building. I go to architectural colleges for services part. Believe me, most of the student burn my lecture. <laughs> I tell them, I know what I am teaching this is the most boring subject. But now, many of you are here as an architect practicing and you must be understanding the importance of the services. I start with the statement to the student that give me example of a single structure which doesn't have a toilet. Right? So they don't give example because every structure, maybe airport, railway station, residential, commercial, everywhere toilet is there. And toilet require pipes. And for pipes, if they don't know how many number of pipe and how much space required to accommodate that diameter of the pipe, how will you plan the space? A toilet and the shaft is part of the space you are planning for. And being it is ignored and it is compromised and end users are suffered. So slowly they understand when they, when they practice about. But in my today's uh, delivery, I may be discussing more about space than structural part. This is first time I am addressing to structural engineers. Otherwise, I did many training programs, but specifically on the plumbing part only. But I tried to incorporate most of, most of the structural part in my uh, PPT. To start with, in our high-rise structure, there are complexity related to MEP. As I told you, parking spaces. Basement parking, street parking, podium parking, rotary parking. In basement, when we discuss about parking part, again there are stack parking. Whenever there is a basement or any structure, there will be beam falling down, right? And my all pipes, fire pipe, electrical cable tray, plumbing drainage pipes are suspending below beam bottom. And when it suspends below the beam bottom, it away, it just eats away the parking space, maybe for stack parking. Given length of the pipeline, if it moves, uh, it starts from one end to another with the gradient, again it comes down. And most of the time we are struggling to accommodate it within basement or a podium. So my intention is to address this part. Being a structural engineer or an architect, 
you should have a proper MEP consultant who is thoroughly into this. What, what you expect from them, the total routing, routing of the services, maybe cable train, maybe fire hydrant pipe, maybe plumbing pipes suspended. Again and again I am talking about suspended pipe because with the habitable area, the toilet duct actually ends in the podium or basement top. Up till now for small buildings, maybe up to 7th floor, the drainage pipe comes down on the ground floor and drainage along the perimeter goes out with the network of drainage pipeline. But now in high rise building with the compliance of parking, all shafts are hanging above the basement or a podium and then that pipe has to be diverted to another end. So then complexity starts. Even I have seen when there is a headroom problem to accommodate the pipe below the beam bottom. Believe me, I have seen core cutting for drainage pipe of 150 mm diagonals. So somewhere else somehow structure is compromised. So if it is planned well in advance with the inward level of the pipe at each and every level, at least we make sure that there is no uh, damage to the structure. So depth of the beam and available headroom, routing of the suspended pipe, in the basement, actually there is a raft, but sometimes it is ignored that basement also requires channel and a sump, and sump minimum 1 meter cube. So most of the time I have a resistance from structural engineer, I cannot give you 1 meter depth sump within the raft, but it has to be planned accordingly and it is need of our, because whenever there is a flooding in the basement, this channel and sump is useful. When pump is accommodated, pump is also having some depth and it requires some water stored in that sump to pump up. So again, sump is part of the MEP, MEP planning. See, as I said, uh, this is one of the drawing which we made with the inward level and total routing. With this pipe routing, we can understand and given this project, client has to sacrifice few parking, but other parkings are saved and specifically the no core cutting in the beam. So this kind of routing of the pipeline, you should ask for with inward level. So that architect can make out how much headroom is available from the floor. <coughs> and for most of the structure we are practicing now, not a single building without this suspended line. Almost all multi-story building has a suspended drainage line fire hydrant line, sprinkler line, and cable drain. discuss about surface drain and sum. Now, again with the open space complexities and restriction, underground tanks are also accommodated within the basement. So, that underground tank in the basement has again some complexities. See, this is an example of one structure which This one high rise building in the Mumbai itself. Can you see water tank provision? It is like a floating structure, Udayaguruka or Lake Mem Highlands. There is no space to accommodate 2 lakh litre of fire tank. Most of the space is utilized. Even this structure has a basement also. 
these are complexity now believe me see the compound wall and the retaining wall of the tank there was a big discussion about shore piling even shore piling contractor has regretted to do the shore piling given this design and at the end of the day this tank has to be relocated into the basement when pipe or services comes down it starts from the highest floor to the ground or basement so specifically cutouts are there and hardly some cutouts are useful when it is planned but then after it is done with core cutting or a breaking and you understand the what is the scenario post breaking or core cutting so mep consultant role is very big with respect to the structural cut out and sleeve provision now when high rise structure is planned we are doing for more than 30 floor building so sun free toilets are now required means required by specifically structural engineer there the simple reason is reducing the load of the brick bed coba so here we are used to 200 mm minimum sunk for toilet and kitchen with the brick bed filling but out of india it is not a trend always hardly 50 mm sunk for the weight area waterproofing and then core cutting or a sleeve provision for nanitrap wc and it is suspended below the toilet we have so many projects like this core cutting or a sleeve provision sun free toilets see this is a project we whichever photo you see is of my side only and I took myself it is not from the net but in future this is a trend and it has already started in Mumbai in many projects sun free toilet all drainage pipeline are suspended below the toilet and then it is hidden in the fall ceiling most critical part most critical part is this sleeve provision specifically when interior planning is there in millimeter we have to mark the WC nanometer outlet and when we mark it in my experience it is near the floor beam right so first of all i give marking of the wc it will be touching to the wall only because there will be a 100 mm ledge wall behind the wall mounted wc after core cutting i realize that i made a mistake because if you see the pipe suspended in the ceiling the connection from the ceiling touching to the core cut is practically not possible Be between beam and core cut or a sleeve at least 50 mm space is required so this requires detailed drawing with like center line drawing so we did this and again for the my one structure you all are aware of aluminium shuttering these all require detailed detailed drawing from MEP consultant only. These are different kind of uh, maybe this black is of single stack uh, drainage system but we are not going to discuss about it. The basic reason you all are aware of for sun free toilet by reducing the mass and load. Duct size is again a biggest problem for services. As building goes higher and floor goes higher more number of supply pipes larger diameter of drainage pipes so in one of my project with the elevation for the multi-story building from bottom it was 1.5 meter and on, on top it became 600 mm with the elevation wherein contrarily for water supply there are more number of pipe on the top floor than the lower floor 
One problem I have experienced is uh, beam breaking in the bathroom, which is not relevant to multi-story, but I want to share this my experience with you. If you see closely, the wash basin outlet pipe is taken to nanotrap by chiseling the beam. And most of you will agree that without this routing, connection to the nanny trap of wash basin pipe is not possible. And at all sides it is break. You can surprisingly check any side, no plumber can touch because see the top of the beam is your top of the slab. If that 50 mm dia or 40 mm dia pipe is above the beam without breaking, bathroom floor is above the passage area. Normally bathroom floor is one tile top, right? So, my point is we have to have beam profile of this kind what I have shown in a green hatch area and with help of one of my uh, friend structural consultant we are doing most of the project with this kind of profile wherever there is a beam uh, wash basin pipes crossing. Can you see being in between the toilets and believe me this is typical. It is not only for the podium floor or first floor and in Mumbai only in a high rise building. What do you say about it? What about planning? Huh? If I would have told you without photograph, you will say kuch bhi vakta hai, kuch bhi bolte hai, I think this is a problem. I don't know how to take out the WC pipe. Again, this is one more than 25 storey building water supply pipe. The planning was such that to route the looping, looping from the terrace over a tank outlet, there are minimum two outlet covering the parapet and each and every toilet. But the plan of the building was such that they had to route from the passage below the tank on the terrace level and they did this kind of routing. As we discuss suspended pipes, can you see the headroom requirements? What is the inward level of the pipe below the beam bottom? And hardly it is considered while considering the height of the building. See, biggest complication in service is drainage pipe. Fire, pipe. fire fighting pipe has a pressurized supply. You can route it with more number of bands from beam bottom they can take it up again to the slab and then again down to the beam. It can be taken any direction with the pressure. But in drainage it is not possible, it has to be in gradient and uh, it requires headroom. One another problem in the structure is gutter beam. As point one indicates, with the change in column grid, parking requires different column grid and habitable area requires different column grid. That is a challenge for you people more than me. But unavoidably, gutter beam comes into the plan and problem starts for MEB. How I will show you with this drawing. This is the photograph of the gutter beam at one of my side. I am trying to show you the drawing of that side only. With the color hatch, yellow color hatch, this is the position of all gutter beam plant in the 20 storage structure. Exactly above this gutter beam, habitable area starts. So, now if we see all this pipeline has to be there below gutter beam. And 
if we carefully look at the typical floor, just a minute, I'll show you the typical floor. A typical floor superimposed with gutter beam. See this red circle is the kitchen. Where there is a kitchen sun, there is a garden beam. Here, toilet, below toilet there is a garden beam. How there will be a sun? See all these toilets. And I plan with Structural engineer a proper solution. So this is the routing of the pipeline above the gutter beam and below the habitable area like this. They gave me some cushioning of 600 mm. And with this 300 mm RCC for the I plan a cutout. So if you see this gutter beam with two RCC per the wherever possible along the Parvi and wherever possible within this cutout we have planned the routing of pipeline it is like electronic PCB whether society member will be able to maintain it or I don't know but I will be definitely I made arrangement for disposal of sewage from top floor to the underground One more part is added into this podium which in electrical nowadays there is no space to accommodate DG. DG will be again compulsory for high rise building. So DG in most of my project are planned on the podium. So for podium when we are talking about the podium slab designing there will be dynamic load and specifically it is possible only on the road side because it has to be lifted with crane or a hydra from the road side only not on the back side. So that part will be heavily loaded that you have to consider about this DG part or DG set also. Suspended line routing, it is in kilometers in some of our project. See, I was talking about pipe on the top floor. This many number of pipe required, this example of the 30 storey building water supply pipe required as per municipal approved design. MCGM required approval for this pipeline and this many number of pipes are required. Whenever some commercial structure is there above the, uh, below the standard building floor plate, it is protruding out and then if it is not planned, this way pipe has to be diverted. What do you see in this multi-storey building? Again, this is my side only. Any comment on it? We are running short of time, I'll just tell you there is no, no service platform.
मेंटेनेंस इज इम्पॉसिबल झूले में भी कोई नहीं उतरता है वो सात माले का बिल्डिंग का जब ठीक है इज इम्पॉसिबल एंड आई देर आर दिस मैनी नंबर ऑफ पाई एंड अगेन इफ समी से मेंटेनेंस इज नॉट रिक्वायर इट विल बी मोर इंटेंसिव फॉर मेंटेनेंस हाउ आई टेल यू द क्विकली आई टेल यू अबाउट द की पार्ट ऑफ द हाई राइज बिल्डिंग वॉटर सप्लाई इन हाई राइज बिल्डिंग हाउ यू आर अफेक्टेड विथ और हाउ योर डिजाइनिंग इज अफेक्टेड विथ हाई राइज मे बी वॉटर सप्लाई इन हाई राइज बिल्डिंग कैन बी ऑफ फोर टाइप प्रेसर रिड्यूसिंग वॉल सिस्टम मल्टीपल स्टोरेज टैंक सिस्टम ब्रेक प्रेसर टैंक एंड हाइड्रोनोमेटिक क्विकली वील डिस्कस अबाउट प्रेसर रिड्यूसिंग वॉल आर यू अवेयर ऑफ दिस पी आर वी सिस्टम प्रेसर रिड्यूसिंग वॉल सिस्टम इज जस्ट अ ग्रेविटी सिस्टम लाइक वी हेवर सेवन स्टोरेज बिल्डिंग वॉटर सप्लाई पाइप थ्रू द टेरेस लुपिंग एंड नाउंटेन इट कम्स डाउन बट विथ सिंपल फिजिक्स गिवन हाइट ऑफ द बिल्डिंग the when uh, water comes down it will, the pressure at the lower floor is so high that most of the body that uh, help for set geyser water purifier may be get they are burst so every 1 meter column pressure develop is 1 meter for 70 meter it will be 7 kg pressure and maximum permissible pressure within the pipeline is 2.4 kg beyond that your faucets will get damaged and water wastage will be there with excessive pressure it will disperse more water than the required so this is a typical photograph of the pressure reducing valve with the section and right side photograph is installation of prv so this is just a schematic of the water supply pipeline from over at tank from over at tank water comes down with the low up to lower floor this is a example of 12 story building but it will require pressure reducing valve at every 24 meter because 0.1 kg pressure at every meter so for 20 uh, for every 24 meter pressure goes beyond 2.4 kg to control that prv is used so wherever prv is installed there should be proper access and the photograph which i showed there is no access and definitely this prv is very sensitive to dirt it requires maintenance and setting of the pressure the second uh, method of water distribution in high rise building is break pressure tank so in this if you see there is one over at tank and break pressure tank at intermediate floor is it visible yes. so the capacity of water tank is divided accordingly for every seven floor below and it is accommodated in refuge floor fire compliance is for almost at every 24 meter or if it is not there it is relocated accordingly wherever space is available but given this uh, schematic the tank is placed such a way that no pressure valve is required every tank is catering to only seven floor and within 24 meter so this is just a photograph of the floor where tank is accommodated one more method is multiple storage tank in multiple storage tank it is like same over at tank intermediate flow tank but the difference is the water is pumped up from ground level to over at tank in break pressure tank where in multiple storage tank water is pumped up to every tank at respective floor where in break pressure tank it was to only over at tank so how it relates your design in break pressure tank over at tank capacity should be 100% of the total daily requirement here it is 33% now we are doing so many project with hydropneumatic system the biggest advantage of this hydropneumatic system is no overhead tank is required 
totally opposite to the gravity system. So the underground water tank capacity will be 100 percent of the total daily requirement. It will be pumping up with the hydrodynamic system like this, multiple working uh, one standby and multiple working pump with the control panel and pressure vessel. Again, it requires some space to accommodate its ground or basement level. But the biggest advantage for you is we are doing away with overhead tank, so load is reduced. And uh, in Mumbai side, if we take example of uh, Mumbai side, Bandra, Arla, Andheri, some of area is falling into funnel zone of airport. So there is a height restriction, and most of the buildings are with hydropneumatic because one floor. You understand the value of one floor in that region for ranging from 60,000 rupees per square feet to lakh rupees. So with this hydropneumatic system, apart from forget about load, it is advantageous. Aluminium shuttering. What we discuss about, it has to be planned properly for each and every group and box required. Most of the uh, Maiwan or some other manufacturer don't encourage much deeper or box group. Now what we do in a planning, that toilet part is ignored into Maiwan shuttering. It will be a typical masonry, otherwise there will be a ledge wall. And again, it will be a reduced area with respect to era compliance. So toilet part should be non-aluminum shuttering. Otherwise, uh, we have to have a ledge wall. I'll just quickly show you the detailing required for my one shuttering, which you must ask for from each and every consultant. If this is a plan, in plan, this much detailing required in section also with the diameter and height in height and length means x axis and y axis uh, dimensions required electrical boxes are screwed into the my one shuttering inside not grew kept into the permanent means normally electrical boxes in aluminum shuttering because in my one there will be multiple electrical points so it has to be screwed onto the plate of the my one shuttering Again, there is a criticality of keeping the sleeve in the Maiwan shuttering. As I told you, I showed you that suspended line from the bathroom, it again crosses the beam and there will be minimum 150 mm dia sleeve required. So if we put a PVC sleeve, it will not remain when pouring of the concrete or the vibrator, it will not remain. So in our project, what we did, we made a drill into the Maiwan shuttering yeah, Firki is a sleeve. My one, it is fitted into my one within two holes of that my one shuttle. So it will hold in that place. After removing that, this can be taken out. These are GI pipe sleeves, not PVC pipe sleeve. But when it is fitted with the rod in the shuttering it will not move with a millimeter also if it tilts pvc sleeve tilts it is of no use for sprinkler or a drainage pipe so extra care is required in this aluminum shuttering pre casting and post casting casting this for sulfur toilet and you can see the sleeve Finally, the checklist. What we should take care while planning or you may ask for all this data to the concerned person, maybe architect or relevant people, pile cap level. MEP consultant should discuss about pile cap level because in most of the project we have a problem of pile cap. Wherever pile falls onto the pile cap, it is difficult to conceal underground. Pre-pim level. 
in multi story building most of the services are running across the plinth so i personally advise to have at least 700 to 900 mm down it may go up to 1.1 meter down the finished ground level not plinth level finished ground level this plinth may should be down and it can be extended with the masonry stp or underground tank location you have to check electrical main supply cable routing in one of my project there was a underground tank in the open space and there was no space to take inside the main cable up to the meter room so we decided to take down the top of the underground tank slab by 800 mm and then we uh, had a routing of this cable hydraulic sprinkler pipe same routing sun requirement on podium slab or kitchen toilet outside the building line pipes are going outside maybe above the commercial uh, roof commercial establishment on uh, area so there should be sun provision proper channel type are you getting me building is inside 30 feet and the shop frontage is outside so the vertical pipe going to the external face of the building it takes 30 feet so how to hide that you have to consider it so you require proper channel and again that channel will be hanging into the commercial area but you have to plan accordingly one of the photo i skipped there was no provision so it was taken from the flat and diverted there was no chance to take down to the commercial area the pipe diverted from the habitable area toilet if you have seen that uh, pipe suspended with the plate that was unlikely solution but these are the issues being that we discuss cut out provision in podium slab for surface drain even there will be two core cut for surface drain pipelines see these small things are ignored and again it is break and made provision column and beam with the toilet now in high rise building the length of the column will be more so most the most of the pipeline are uh, maybe uh, toilet wall on the both the side there will be column so client is builder is reluctant to give ledge wall so that because it is reducing the area right but in some given i would prefer to have extra covering to the columns because of water thing may be failing again it is penetrating into the structure so column falling within the bathroom should have additional covering specifically within the sunk service platform we discuss about over a tank compartment again is a niche part but it's okay but you have to check it again because the pipe i showed with the multiple core cut at the terrace level that was just a problem of compartment provision if would a orientation it would have been changed that beam core cut photo what you have seen would not be there for stable structure we require favorable interest no compromise thank you hey thank Nalkar sir and Hatkar uh, ji for giving me opportunity with their uh, follow. I am here and I am that you got such kind of a dedicated member to bring me here. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful discussion. Indeed, it gives us insight. important with a whole different perspective as a token of our appreciation may i call upon engineer bimal acharya to kindly present a memento and a gift to engineer manish parak
water, concrete is the most widely used substance on earth. It is the foundation of modern day development, putting roofs over the heads of billions, fortifying a defense against natural disaster and providing a structure for healthcare, education, transport, energy and industry. And continuing with more innovation in this field, let's call upon Ultratech Cement for their product presentation. Over to you Ultratech. Yeah, good evening. Uh, great pleasure to welcome all the elite professionals uh, on behalf of Arcadex Cement Limited. In fact, I wanted to have more time, but uh, there is positive of time, so I try to uh, give maximum which we can deliver to you. Uh, I'll just start with a small quote. A lawyer's mistake ends with the case. A lawyer's mistake ends with the case. A doctor's mistake ends with the patient. Maybe the patient may die. But a similar civil engineer's mistake will remain forever. Thani Krikrij. So I am also an engineer, I am also a civil engineer. But why I am giving this opening statement is Whatever we do, whatever we do construction, it should be the best, best of class. And it is precisely when my learned engineer was talking about drainage pipes. Uh, we started our journey with making cement. We started in long back, more than 30 years back. And today though we are more having a capacity of more than 120 million tons. So sir, there are, as we move forward, there is always a change in the technology. So we were producers at one point of time, producers of cement. But today we are, we, our vision is to become the leader in the building solution. So how we can help the customer, what are their pain points? So one way of making concrete is make it on site, have your own concrete mixers. But as we go with a high grade of concrete, we may have to go with RMC. So one unit is we have set up here recently in Boiser for the benefit of the engineers and the faculty who is here. So you can utilize that facility, it will be starting shortly. And wherein you get good quality of concrete. Second important point is sir, you had spoken about drainage, drainage pipes. So earlier we used to have these prepacked cobas, but now there are products and solutions which are available where you use flex, high flex and have a thin layer and over it you can do screed, maybe 25-30 mm of that and do proper cover. So if you do that, your load will also reduce because you had spoken in your presentation that load increases when you use this prepaid copa and we are giving live demos and today also we are going to give you two live demos I am not going to have give a big presentation otherwise it will turn for one hour but we want to become solution providers now and uh, if you use that properly one coat of flex in the horizontal direction one in vertical direction 
and uh, after it dries you can fill it with water for 7 days and some of the, these are some of the small points i am trying to share with all of you because uh, precaution is better than cure prevention is better than cure today i am also staying in mumbai and uh, when my flat leaks i get very angry <coughs> drainage pipe mein se to leakage hota hi hai to drainage pipe ka jab aap conceal karte ho uske pehle test karna bahut zaruri hai jo pehle ke builders nahi karte the and we are also sufferers of that so aap karte hi hoge definitely you are your advance even sir we have some products for your when you are putting the pipe inside so there are grounds available which are of very high grade and there are flowable grounds so you can utilize those type of products and uh, coming back to what i was telling you earlier when you do this flex high flex uh, waterproofing what will happen is after 7 days you have to see the leakage is there or not and if there is no leakage then you can do the screed over it so these are some of small small pain points which our engineers are having we are addressing to that even when you do my wine shuttering uske andar hole reh jata hai aap usko kheech lete ho jo do aluminum ke jo plates hai usko aapko join karna padta hai so there is a hole left so uska bhi ek presentation hai jo hum aapko dikhayenge and we have some special products which can be used for filling the holes so we'll be more than happy to connect with all of you post this session because i know there is a paucity of time and there are power packed presentations from another concrete technologist here so uh, first of all let me thank the entire faculty for making ultra tech india's number one cement and on behalf of my entire team I thank you, sir. All of it, girls and men. It is because of you we are here, and it has been our endeavour to uh, see that we support these technical lectures and uh, try to give the best solutions to all our customers. so just i will give in brief the overview of our company so 50% of our revenues which we are getting we are getting from abroad and uh, it is truly indian multinationals we have manufacturing facilities not only in india but abroad and apart from cement we are making other products also so some of the products which we are making a carbon black we are manufacturing we have we are in aluminum and uh, we are in various other business including the telecommunications so it has been the endeavor of altate our aditi billa group to be number 1 in number 1 or number 2 in any business globally and today we are the third largest producer of cement in entire world excluding china so i on one end of the spe spectrum we are making cement we are also having rmc we are having this altate building solutions which is having more stores than cafe coffee day so this particular building solution store is pro providing all types of products under one roof from foundation to finishing you get all the products of course uh, cement which is close to our heart and birla white birla white white cement is manufactured and it is under the umbrella of alta tech cement and uh, as i told you our vision is to be the leader in building solutions and uh, it 
it is on four pillars innovation sustainability customer centricity and team empowerment uh, again i would like to share with you that we are aggressively entering the ready mix concrete business we are having more than 200 plants in west now earlier we started with 100 units only pan india but today aggressively we are increasing the number of plants and all the products are tailor made suppose a customer wants self compacting concrete we are in a position to provide suppose you want temperature controlled concrete that also we are producing and it is tailor made solutions maybe it can be m70 grade m80 grade depending upon the need of the customer if you have big wraps 2000 cubic meter 3000 cubic meters we are able to supply we have done it in ahmedabad bombay and other places where you require temperature control in the concrete and with your support and help we are more than 120 million tons we are producing and we are not going to end here uh, we are going to scale it up this is the portfolio of birla white we are birla white is producing birla white cement white putty and bouquet of other products as i told you earlier we had only 100 rmc plants now we are scaling up to a great extent and uh, here we also promote different technologies i would just like to mention about white topping technology most of the roads now in mumbai are with this white topping technology wherein it is just an overlay over the bitumen road you have to chip out the bitumen top surface of the bitumen and lay this concrete which is m40 grade concrete and without any reinforcement the key point is you have to do groove cutting within 24 hours d by 3 ka groove cutting kariye depth ka banta takna padega minimum or the section can be reduced from 300 mm to 150 mm also so this technology is available and right near my house in mira road also they have done it and uh, we are doing in ahmedabad and many places so again i want to share with you we are also doing research with nagpur college engineering college Vignal engineering college and we are making precast roads so straight away make precast roads lay it on the ground and after say one or two days you can start the traffic so these are some of the fundings which Alcatech is doing and uh, some new technologies. So we always support new technology and slowly in national highway also they are going to start this bike up. So it will not only save our valuable foreign exchange because it is uh, you are using local resources and not bitumen otherwise you have to import them. Alternate building solutions, more number of stores than cafe coffee day. Alternate building solutions will give a live demo today. My colleague who has, Mr. Rajiv has come for that. And there are bouquet of products in that. You can, we have products like plasters, adhesives, flooring, and other products for maintenance. And we have product for waterproofing also. And for simple houses, you can use our Ultratech Super Plus and 200 ml of <coughs> Weather Pro per bag of cement to get the best waterproofing, which is integral waterproofing. Now, just one more slide I would like to show. The opportunities are immense. The per capita consumption of various countries are shown here. And uh, India ka kitna bhi 200, 250. So per capita consumption per annum is only 200, 250. Please see China, highest population, but per capita consumption is more than 1000. So we have a lot of opportunities and uh, with the basic infrastructure ramp which is happening everywhere, cement is going to grow. This is our footprint in Pan-India. 
we can supply cement in every nook and corner of the country. These are our capabilities, integrated plant. The logistics team, we are also exporting cement to Sri Lanka. <coughs> this is our own technical services where we do this type of presentations and also support R&D. And uh, we have recently launched uh, UTEC, which is to support any customer in their home building journey. So with this, I would request my colleague, Mr. Rajiv, to give a live demo. Good evening, all, and thank you, Abhimal sir. Actually, we had a number of products, or you can say the number of categories, a bouquet of products. But we are going to uh, give live demo of Of the ISU and also to maintain a proper thickness of the ISU 
and also uh, not to have any like wastage during the application. So in terms of proper application, like three to four hours, depending on the size or the type of device. So like this, this must be done. So we need to have this kind of application. Time can be fixed up on that. Bad battery is must because when we ensure bad battery. So if the entire cover cover up the entire axle surface of the tire, and there won't be any air void behind the tire. Okay. By doing so, uh, our next option is that the tire can be moved in perpendicular direction to the margin. That will ensure whatever the air pocket between the tire has not been flushed out completely. And air, air voice, whatever they are, so that air will be completely removed from the mask. So that is what we need to take care of during the application. The important part of the tire assembly work we are offering is we have the key.
These are the tile addresses which are available tile fix or CT, VT, NT, YT. So CT is for the ceramic tiles, VT for vitrified tiles, NT for natural stones like granite. Uh, YT is a white color tile adhesive with white cement base. So that is for the marbles where we want to protect the sheen of the marble. And the last one is extra plus that is uh, again for the uh, natural stones but with uh, like uh, higher thickness which has like uh, heavier cladding. So for that, uh, it's a superior version of tile fix, so NT. So these are like uh, defined under type 1, type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. And then we have uh, tile fix, so CT strong. Uh, grout, in grout, tile grout, we have two. Uh, one is cementitious tile grout and other one is the uh, stylo, uh, stylo, which we have seen in the live. And one more product we will be adding in the basket is tile binder sumo. That will uh, go for the floor application with a conventional system so in that normally we face an issue that the binding is not proper in case of floor when they are just adding the cement slurry so this sumo has to be added in the cement slurry so that will ensure a proper stronger bond of the tiles for the for when we are going for the floor on the application so this is all about the tile applications thank you of time go through the products that are available in terms of RMC so as sir already has briefed like we have got customized solution so which we call as a very amazing concrete range so there are various things like decorative solutions are there there are end to end solution that is decorative concrete machine which is a polished flow dura facade is a facade that is made with UHPC so you can have slender sections of the facades in that Pervious concrete is also available which can be used in landscaping where the water can get percolated into the ground and the ground water can get recharged. Then in strength protect we have got aqua seal. This is an integral waterproof concrete solution. So again it's a complete package like post concreting joint treatment is also done and we say that you can eliminate the for heavy basements and all the waterproofing thing. Thermocon plus for large mass concreting where you want to control the heat of hydration. It's not about just the placing temperature control. It's about heat of hydration control for mass concreting that we commit. Free flow plus is a self compacting concrete wherein you don't need any external vibration and you can place the concrete, the concrete that flows on its own, compacts on its own. Then there is a fire safe. So for cable ductings in the building, high rise building, you need to close each uh, cable ducting with a 2R fire rated product. So this is Altatic Fire Safe is a 2R fire rated product certified from CBRI. Then Dura Plus is an all-in-one product which gives you multi things like lesser in cracks, lesser in dampness and flowable concrete. And there are lightweight concrete, both structural and non-structural which can be utilized to reduce the dead load of the structure. Rapid hardening concrete and zip. Zip is a small packaging concrete that you can get all the varieties what we have discussed now in a small packaging where the transit fixes cannot go so we can provide you a ready to use concrete in bags. So all this from my end. Thank you. Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. In case of some queries are there, we are available outside. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. As a token of our I call upon engineer Sanjay Naran to kindly present a memento and a gift to Sri Ram Tengde. that I want to make. MH6746, there is a red car with the number 6746. Kindly please uh, contact someone at the gate. There is a problem. We have to move the car a little bit. So the car number 6746, please meet someone at the gate below. Thank you so much. And there are a few more cars, uh, MH03CB3672, it's a white car, 
MH03CB3672 and this one as well? Yeah. Yeah. And MH16BY6375. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. The numbers are read out. Please meet someone at the gate. Thank you so much. Okay, audience. Did you know that Mumbai alone accounts for more than skyscrapers, followed by 12 in Kolkata? While a number of skyscrapers are currently under construction, Mumbai has the highest concentration of high rises in India. It is also known to have seventh largest number of high rises in the world. The modern use of innovative construction materials in terms of concrete and others can truly make these structures durable and sustainable. To add to this thought, we have engineer Mahesh Tendulkar, a concrete technologist for the topic concrete for high rise structures. Engineer Mahesh Tendulkar did his M.Tech from IIT Bombay and Bachelors of Civil Engineering from Bombay University. He has 30 years of rich experience in the field of civil engineering, having worked for execution of a lot of infrastructure projects such as thermal power project, hydro power project, construction of Mumbai metro and road project, quality control, concrete mix design and good quality construction. His experience can be broadly classified into four categories execution and quality control of various infrastructure projects, development of project-specific assurance of quality and creating an auditing system for that, training the professions in the field of good construction practices with concrete technology and construction techniques, and development of system for inspection of bridges, creating a report and doing follow-up. It is a privilege to have you here with us today. Over to you, sir. Thank you. So thank you organizers, good evening friends, uh, thanks for especially ISSC because uh, I am associated with ISSC right from the inception and work for a lot of seminars like this seminars organizing and of course good friends of mine with cement industry and today is my honor that my cement guru Pandya sir is with me here so thanks sir. So I started my career in cement industry, I, he was my first boss in cement company. So before I start, let me clarify one thing. I am not related with Sachin Tendulkar, <laughs> but I got the message from the dressing room that you have to finish by within 30 minutes. <laughs> so they are expecting me to, uh, no, this is a slog over and you have to hit boundaries and success. So. I was expecting this, which is a normal case in our Indian seminar, so I have restricted only six points, only six points, because concrete is a very vast subject. So I said, let us be specific to six takeaways after this seminar. So when we are talking about concrete, and again concrete for high-rise structures, what I learned from my gurus, one late Mr. Remedios, and one Mr. Cyrus Dordi or CM Dordi, they used to tell us when we were in the field, when we were in the career, treat concrete as human being and construction and production of concrete as giving birth to the child. Then only we can perform a good concrete, durable concrete. 
and really it is a mean once we understand the concrete like a human being we can take care of it very well and unfortunately we are not doing it at site like this so that is a sad part now when about when we talk about the high rise structures the key point as the first lecture pariksar has rightly pointed out we have to look at the least maintenance cost so our concrete should be such that the structure will have least maintenance cost we don't have scaffolding to do it replaster repaint every 5 years 10 years so our durability of structure with the least maintenance cost is of prime fascia again faster slab cycle earlier i remember when we were starting my career 30 days was supposed to be the best slab cycle then it came down to 15 20 days now we are talking as early as 2 to 3 days my one construction 8 days 10 days so this is a drastic change which is happening in high rise structure of course we are high going higher and higher so concrete is taking more and more care so we want high grade concrete and i still remember everybody want flow concrete they don't want to take much efforts i still remember when we were i started my career in 1992 we were told and we used to pump 125 mm slum concrete but today if the flow is less than 550 people are not happy they want place the concrete here it should travel right up to the end they want least effort least efforts in vibration least effort in joining the pipes so this is they want free flow concrete at the cost of normal concrete that is most important <laughs> then concrete and material challenges these are so many challenges now once you understand this then you can see the rmc manufacturers what precautions what challenges they are doing i will just explain about this rmc really nowadays challenges are going uh, no it is increasing day by day i will cover why it is increasing then depth of foundation and raft is increasing i still remember in one of the metro project when we cross this uh, andheri western express highway our height of the foundation pylon foundation was 5.5 meter so it must be more more than this height and that we cast about 620 cubic meter we have completed in around 20 hours just imagine the busy junction of andheri landmark junction what we call by closing the traffic from sun saturday evening late evening to sunday evening so these are the challenges what are the challenges in raft i will cover that with our current experience and of course we can't 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 we can't neglect good construction practice rmc is there so rmc is doing some part of this but good construction practice we cannot eliminate now when we talk about high grade concrete there are so many codes they will say n55 onward is high grade concrete 60 onward high grade concrete so according to we just i can assume that suppose we are in this area we will be doing about 25 to 30 or 35 grade of concrete today so we are going next step ahead and we will go to say 50 to 55 50 grade 45 to 50 grade concrete so really this is a next step i will cover based on that basically today's presentation and of course factors affecting strength are mainly quality of material mix design and quality control at site but most important aspect which is the in situ strength of concrete which nobody nobody cares which it depends on vibration compaction and curing because we don't have any test to find the strength of concrete after compaction and curing and really in our current project of bendibazar redevelopment our management was so keen so we have used temperature sensors to estimate the in place concrete strength up to 56 days so it was a really interesting project of course we can't cover that in detail it is a really it is a good subject we learned a lot again we are going to modify our mistake or i will say learnings in the next uh, phase so it is a really interesting subject and before going further i want to highlight some perceptions and general practice one of the biggest perception i will say misconcept 
Am I right? More strength is more cement. This is our first perception. We will come to that later in detail. 20 mm aggregate, what we call Pavna inch, khadi, do number khadi, that gives strength. Just two days back, we were with one of the uh, big metro contractor designing mix for spine girder. There was so much congestion, we suggested to go with 10 mm down mix of M50 grade concrete. Then he was worried, the senior consultant, he must be above 60 or 65. His first question, if you reduce the 20 mm aggregates, eliminate, how your concrete will gain strength? So that means, the conception is, 20 mm gives us strength, but if you see the real strength, real fact, that as the grade increases, 60, 70, 80, the chances of aggregate failure is more than the bond failure, and we have to reduce the aggregate size. 70, 80, 10 mm down. If you have heard about the reactor powder concrete, M120, M150, they are without 10 mm aggregates. So bond failure is a normal failure, but when we go beyond 70, beyond 80, aggregate is liable to failure, so we have to reduce the aggregate size, flakiness index, or what we have the impact value. So those factors are more critical when we are talking about hybrid concrete. So it is not that aggregate gives the strength, it is not the reason. Then crushed sand, crushed sand is very fine, so there is perception. But we were once, I was conducting one seminar in Aurangabad. The one of the engineers said, no, we found that crushed sand is very fine. I said, okay, how much fine? No, it is very fine. See, we are engineers. We can't say very fine, less fine. We should have some major. Then we say, let us, okay, take the sample, find the 600 micron passing, and that, that 600 micron fine, say 28, 30%. Okay, fine. It is finer than natural sand because we were living in the era of natural sand but now we are changing from natural sand to crushed sand, M sand but the technical word as per code is called as a crushed stone sand, CSS. Neither grit, neither M sand, actually M sand is something different which is a manufactured sand which is not a crushed sand. Whereas crushed stone sand is the right word and that is the main culprit which we are facing today. Cement, yes, all cement means we have, I am proud that I have worked for cement industry for quite some time and really we have very good cement brands in India and whenever I go, I say don't waste your time in testing cement. Once you get the strength of concrete, why you want to test cement? It is good. but. Aggregate admixtures, yes, but what about aggregates? No, no, we have to accept it what we get it. We don't want to improve that. So aggregate becomes a big challenge and in that crushed sand is a big challenge. Yes, blended cements are not suitable for RCC. This is again one of the misconceptions. You will not believe in government projects, pre-stressed concrete structures are cast with only OPC. Again, we can design any concrete at any strength. Just I will give you one example, one precast project we are dealing with, we are designing 40% of M65, which is around 22 MPS strength in 16 hours, not with OPC, it is along with the fly ash and GGBS. So it is not like that, that this is not possible, nothing is impossible. Nowadays, concrete, cement, chemistry has gone so advanced, so nothing is impossible. Cement, or rather concrete cracks because of heat or hydration of cement. So this is again one of the things. Whenever we see slabs crack, they say, no, no, you are using high grade cement. So it is cracking because of heat of hydration. But once we talk about the column, there are no cracks. Column is having mass concrete more than slab. But we don't accept that we don't cure it and then cracks are because of lack of curing. We say it is because of heat of hydration. First culprit is the, earlier it was cement, now it is RMC. So if there are cracks, these are because of RMC supply. I will come to that in detail later. Last two points, which I want to highlight, very important point. If we get cube strength results, yes, structure is very good. And 
if tubes or filial structure is very bad. I will say tube is an indication, tube test is an indication. We take some sample while casting the structure and test that sample for this. So it is indication. But what is happening to structure? That is most important. So now this today also I will just give an example. I was to come here directly for the seminar, but emergency had to go for our site because there was some failure of M70 and 80 grade. So my first question is very good. Failure is that it is very good. Because you don't think 70 and 80 is so easy. There will be some failure, but there could be some reason we have to do some corrective action. I will rather say if there is no failure, something fishy is going on. So manipulation, we are very expert in tube test results, tube test registers. Standard deviation. Standard deviation below 1.5 to, I always say yes, it is very easy. No need to check the cement register, tube test register. Be practical. Cement itself has a standard deviation of 3, 3.5 and why you expect concrete standard deviation less than 2? Impossible. So be practical and accept the fact and for that we have to work at the ground and not in the just looking at the laboratory results in the office. So that is most important. Testing facilities site, nobody talks about this. If we have aggregates coming to site, what we are checking? If concrete is coming at site, what we are checking? Tube test machine. Nobody wants to have tube test machine. Cost will start 1.5 lakh to maximum 4 lakhs. We have that burden. And we are doing projects in crores. But we want to save in lakhs. So this is a very sad part. Testing facilities at site most. And this is the most thing. We have RMC ordered, so nothing to worry about quality. So RMC owner will take care of that. So I will come to that point again later because what we do, RMC owner can take care up to concrete transportation and at most pumping. Who will take care for placing, who will take care for compaction, who will take care for last point which is the curing, which is the most important thing and if we don't cure concrete, don't expect concrete to perform as expected in our mixed design. Many times we take, now this is a winter is going on. We are so precious that concrete curing water temperature is going for, so heat it. But what we are doing at site, how to cure it, then we have, no, no, it is not possible, water is not available. If we spray water, it will be dry off. Whether to cure during daytime and night time also, when to start. So we have n number of questions, but no solutions. Again, I will share my experience about this curing. So according to this, curing is not curing with water. Most important, curing is simple technical definition. Prevention of evaporation loss. And one of the method is wet curing by spraying water. There are many methods available and which we can do more effectively. So like that we can say first 24 hours is like our structure is in ICU, newborn baby. If it is not taken care, defects are there for lifelong. First three days, yes again it is more critical. Curing for 7 to 10 days, if it is a blended cement, 10 days. But what we generally do, we neglect the first 24 hours. I will say not only neglect, we don't cure in first 24 hours and all cracks will occur, plastic shrinkage cracks, they will start and then again I am repeating who to blame, RNC supplier or cement supplier. See nobody is adding cracks in concrete and sending it to you. We have to take care by doing proper curing, that is most important. And crack is there, our structure has lost the durability. Now what happens, we will go now one by one about the materials, challenges in material. As I said, we have shifted from slum concrete to flow concrete. So this is one of the big change we have seen. And for that there are three things, cement is changing. We were having only OPC, now we have PPC, PSC, OPC plus flash, OPC plus GGBS. Yes, it is a good sign. Then we have switched over from natural sand to river crushed 
strand again it is a change admixture which is again very important aspect so use of supplementary cementitious material or blended cement so obviously early strain gain will not be as good as earlier but we can design we can design any strain with this blended cement provided it is designed accordingly so de-shuttering time yes if you wanted to have proper de-shuttering time what you want it can be designed but spell out the requirements spell out the requirement of 3 days 7 days 14 days it can be designed natural sand yes now the most challenge we are facing is the consistency in fines consistency in mixed proper means uh, specific gravity absorption at least this area i will say lucky see material changes every 100 kilometers suppose we are getting so this ag aggregate from Uran. That is the one part. Here, Vada, Vasai, better part. So, better specific gravity, less water absorption. So, many times, no, you just call your friend, what is your mixed drain for M50? Okay, I will follow. No, it is not like that. Aggregate plays very important role. So, mixed design will vary as per place to place, mainly because of aggregates. And again, mainly because of crushed sand in that. Admixture, yes. What is the purpose we are using for admixture? I will just cover that. If we want to delay the setting time in foundation, we want different admixture. If we want to increase the workability retention, that is a different admixture. So we should spell out our requirement and then admixture will be tailor-made admixtures. All admixture companies, they have very good support for formulations and they will design for the tailor-made admixtures. Like what we used to stitch person to person, shoulder, everything change. So everything requirement change. Captive plan, commercial plan, requirement is change. So there are so many things that is also advanced technology and we get very good uh, technology support from them. So of course, when we talk about concrete materials, don't lack like penny, you know, save some 100 rupees, 50 rupees, 10 rupees, and ultimately we spend a lot of money in the structure and then repair. So be wise and select the, just I will say one example. Suppose cement X brand, or the other brand is cheaper than 10 rupees. Who will purchase, pressurize you? Procurement head, who is not a civil engineer. And he will say, Are uska X brand ka reka hai, sasta mil rahe, le lo. So we get that cement. And ultimately we found that it is admixture is not working, we have to add more cement. So ultimately cost of concrete is higher. So always be wise and select the material with proper mix design. Just cement, I want to just highlight two points. When we are talking about cement, nowadays two things are important. Tri-calcium silicate gives early strength. Dicalcium silicate gives lighter strain and tricalcium aluminate is heat of hydration. When we demand early strength, we have learned in our college that it is an exothermic reaction. Early strain means more reaction, so we have to get more heat of hydration. You can't get concrete which will have high early strain but at the same time low heat of hydration. No. But we have to be prepared to tackle that heat by proper curing method so that concrete will not have any problem in cracks and durability. So this is a very simple fundamental. If it is early strain, it is a fast reaction. We have to tackle the heat of hydration which is generated from the concrete mass. This I can say a bible for civil engineer who is doing mixed design. Abraham's law, we call it the Abraham's law. It says that X axis is water cement ratio and Y axis is the concrete strength, not cement strength. And three curves are cement strength. Curve three is a 53 grade cement, curve two is a 43 grade cement. Of course, now one we can neglect because 33 grade cement is practically not possible. So if you see, Again, uh, code has also mentioned that in case of blended cement, we can use the actual strength or we can curve 2 is up for blended cement. So this provision was not there, but it has been done in the 
latest revision of IS code. Now this is most important point. I will say this is a master stroke. I will say for same water cement ratio. For same water cement ratio, you can see strength of concrete depends on strength of cement. So 53 grade will give 38 mp strength. 43 will 30 mp strength. Or rather, other way, if we want 30 mp strength, we can use water cement ratio 0 0.58 in 53 grade cement and 0 0.50 in 43 grade cement. Now, why I am showing this is because I am coming to the most important point. This is a basic of concrete, any concrete, not even high grade concrete. Concrete has two components, cement and water forms a paste or glue and aggregate is a filler material. Bonding, strength, everything is given by the paste. So they are the most important factor and aggregate is a filler material. Of course, a negative part I will say is the shrinkage is because of cement. So and that is the reason we are more worried about shrinkage cracks. Now why I am what to see here, our first question what we discussed, which concrete will have more strength? Just we'll go 8 bags per cubic meter, 10 bags per cubic meter. So always we say are they good 10 bags per cubic meter is good, concrete will get more strength. This is a general, I'm not saying general, it comes in mind, more cement, more strength. Water cement ratio 0.4 and 0.5. So we recollect the graph, higher the water cement ratio, lesser is the strength or lower the water cement ratio, higher is the strength. So obviously we can say 0.4 will give better strength. Now the hitch, cement contained with 400 kg and 0.4 water cement ratio, cement contained with 500 kg and 0.5 water cement ratio. Any guess? A. E. And here we make a mistake. The reason is Abraham law is not talking about cement content, it talks only about water cement ratio but what is happening? Suppose water cement ratio is 0.4, 300 cement content will allow us to put 120, 400 will allow us to put 160, 500 will put, allow us to put 200. So more water is permitted when we put extra cement. So I will say, if we don't want to control water cement ratio, put more cement. So it is not helping in giving strength, rather it is giving lot of problem in shrinkage. So cement content is nothing to do with strength of concrete, this is the first thing. <laughs> then we talk about workability. Why don't you just tell me about 10 minutes back, spent up. Now when we talk about workability, every structure's workability is different. Whether it is piling, bucket concrete, pump concrete, placer boom concrete, paver concrete. So concrete based on the type of structure, type of placement, type of transport, how much time required for transportation. So that all depends on workability. So we have to take account of all, especially the commercial suppliers. In the traffic, we can't estimate. Mumbai, night time 20 minutes, day time 2 hours. How to protect? How to project the time? So it is very difficult challenge for RMC players, estimate the time. So always I have seen, which is a good thing, they first send couple of vehicles ahead, judge the time which they require and then they adjust the admixture dose, which is the right thing. And when it comes to our site, when we get concrete at site, our aim not to measure exactly 180 slump hai, 500 flow hai. We should see cohesiveness of concrete. One thing, concrete should not segregate or bleed at the time of placing. That is the requirement. This is a M60 grade concrete pumped at 20 meters height for transfer girder. Today I realized the problem of transfer girder for any perception. I was not just knowing this. So this is how concrete aggregate should float in concrete. No segregation, no bleeding. Then workability what we measure is a number. 
it is a visual, we should see the concrete, yes, concrete is cohesive, yes, go ahead. We will say, no, no, 50 flow come aga, reject it. It is not like that. We have to see the thing, how concrete is flowing and then accept it. So this slum to flow has changed the perception or rather the mixed design. Because earlier slum concrete was much easier. Once we want it flow, but at the same time, concrete should not bleed. So a lot of restrictions, RNC players has to, there. And we want him to perform excellent. And we don't want to do anything at sight. So this is how you can see flow test is a really good test. Flow test as per IS 9103 is the most important test. It gives you feeling how concrete will behave after vibration. You can see the left and bottom left picture and center picture. Obviously center picture is good. But the left hand side there is a bleeding, segregation. And this will indicate when you see at the site, the same thing will happen after vibration because this table gives 15 jolting and then we test it. This is a this is what is happens at site. After vibration, concrete will bleed or segregate. So that is the reason flow test is a good thing. But of course, as our normal Indian culture, we have modified that flow test many times. This flow test in the pictorial form and the upper center is a real flow table. But we don't want to have, so we have just taken one ply, put some circle of 700, 500 and use it without any tamping. So it is a modified flow test. It is without tamping and we call it as a flow test. We call it as a flow test without tamping. Actually it is a flow test but slum flow test which is for self-compacting concrete where we are talking about T500 slum. Now you can see this is a self-compacting concrete. Just see, this is again M60 concrete, 10 down, not a single bleeding. So it is very very important and from where we are controlling this, from the aggregate supplied by lot of variation. So when it is a self-compacting mix, really it is a challenge because the aggregate variation need to be controlled in self-compacting mix. I will go slightly fast for this uh, admixture part. Just I will go to this part. How admixture performs? It is a simple mechanism called as the dispersion of cement particles. Admixture, this is a normal cement particles and hatch lines are water entrapped. So when admixture is added, it gives negative charge on cement particle and entrapped water is free. So this is called as a free water or water reduction. So this admixture gives us 20% more water from the added water, 30% more from the added water and we get more slum, more this. So what happens, I just explain you this part clearly. Suppose this is a 40, 400 cement content with 0.5 water cement ratio mix. X slump and Y strength. When we add admixture to this, obviously free water is now there, so slump will increase. And if we don't want to increase the slump, what we can do, we can reduce water. Correct? So when we reduce water, automatically water cement ratio will reduce and it will impact on increase in strength. But if we don't want to increase the strength also, we reduce water, we reduce cement, and we get similar strength. So this is a you know, key why we use admixture. We have a lot of saving because of the admixture. And similarly, I want to highlight about the mineral admixture or blended cement. Suppose 400 cementaceous content, 0.5 water cement ratio, and we don't add admixture. So obviously, when we reduce what? Now here I am not fixing water cement ratio. What I have done? I have reduced water cement ratio and added admixture. So we get water is reduced. So obviously, we will get more strength. Again, same cement, further reduction of water cement ratio, but 120 water, which is not sufficient for admixture to work, it should have minimum 140, 145 water. Otherwise, concrete will not form 0 or 10 mm slump and will not, admixture will not disperse the cement particles. So it requires at least 145-150 water. Then what we do? We increase cement. 
when we increase cement still it is not good 135 water for the same water cement ratio then we go to 500 cement yes now we are comfortable but again 500 cement is a danger beyond codal provision of 450 so what we do either we use ppc flash ggbs psc and again we are comfortable so blended cement or blending of cementation material is important when we go for higher grade of concrete just simple thing say 15 20 grade kuch bhi dalo cement are quite good 20 to 40 admixture yes add the admixture control water cement ratio but after that we can't work without supplementary cementation material we have to add supplementary cementation material so this is how when we go beyond 40 we have to use this otherwise we will be violating the maximum cement content now just because of the lack of time i will go to now aggregate part here also i am sure the small bungalow construction they will be using only single aggregate size only single mix which is a normal crusher but what is happening aggregate is though i will say least uh, no uh, value but it has a having three fourth of the area almost 70 percent of area aggregate contains the volume of concrete so we can't really neglect aggregate special in high grade concrete so i will suggest we have to visit the crusher but we must visit the crusher and if you see the process of aggregate manufacturing it is a really amazing and interesting and many times we don't visit the crusher and whatever we come get the material we say yes then the supplier say this is only available we say okay go ahead but always first go to visit the crusher and then only design start concrete mix design for a particular project there are very good crushers i will say uh, three stage crusher or everywhere all small part of uh, our country even i have gone to sangli jaisingpur aurangabad they have two to three stage crusher so we have changed a lot but we have to see go and see their system and then only we can use proper selection of aggregate so this is what uh, rock on the rock vsi machine and this is one of the recent crusher which i have visited in aurangabad really the the owner of this crusher was from Chenna, this uh, Kerala, and he has installed crusher in Aurangabad. And he has used wash sand. So, this air classified wash sand, I, I think I am proud that this area is a pioneer in wash sand. The first wash sand which we have used is from the Vasai. So, that mud sand near Wali, this uh, Vasai, was the first plant which has produced wash sand. We, without which we cannot go with M80 or 100 grade concrete. So, there are so many modifications of crusher that can be seen only if we go and visit the crusher. And this is what I said, this uh, Aurangabad crusher, they have very different mechanism for screw for washing and the complete crusher, which I have seen the only crusher so far in India, which is covered, completely covered. Other than jaw crusher, everything is covered, so they are so conscious about pollution, so crusher is totally covered and dust control system is installed. Now we come to my topic of art, curing. We say curing is not possible, I want to show you an example, especially for slab. Let us talk first about slab. Any horizontal surface, most easy way of curing is use of plastic sheet. Now what will happen, this is one example where we have done this road project in bead. Around 40 plus temperature in daytime, wind velocity is there, but not a single crack. Earlier there were so many cracks because once we finish the paving, curing compound, then curing, it was taking at least 24 hours. Now I will just show you one clip. You can see what is happening here. If this plastic sheet is laid after initial set time, water from concrete will evaporate but condense below plastic sheet. And humidity between plastic sheet and concrete will be 90% plus which doesn't require any external water for curing and this is the best way of curing. And this we are using it for all projects. Here you can see the bottom one 
even this uh, normal slab, but only thing there must be willingness. It is very easy for slab, but always there is a question what for what column. I will come to that later. So it is very easy after initial setting time because the Hamlo ek army choding was sprinkler karega, who the heaven plot dalega. So they, we have a lot of excuse, but which doesn't practically happen. But if you place concrete sheet, forget even if you don't cure it for seven days, it is okay. So absolutely, this is the best way of curing. Then the vertical surface. It is also possible and those who are in the mirror road area, I am really I am happy that we are with this MMRDA line 9. You can see their peers are wrapped with plastic. So, so they wrap plastic and do the curing. But only thing we are just now discussing with them, they have hazel cloth and then they wrap. So I have just recently in our meeting we said we remove the hazel cloth and only do plastic sheet. What will happen in the hazel cloth, you don't know whether droplets are inside plastic or not. But if it is a pure plastic, you can see there are droplets. I can show you this is one of the bungalow site at Marve. Absolutely, you just feel there is a curing and this system is like that unless and until you experiment, you will not deal. And we have done a lot of samples, we used to cast cubes and keep it near plastic cover and test it. Because always there is a question, why we are curing cubes in this, what will happen? See, Indian brain is the lateral thinking. They always find solution, if and if. So do that also and it will work. And lastly about this mass foundation. See, what is happening in this mass foundation, 2 meter, or rather more than one meter deep, this is what concrete will start hydration. Cement will start hydrating, concrete will, it will evolve the heat and if it is a thin section, heat will come to top dissipate, come to top dissipate. So heat will not be generated or core temperature will not increase. The moment this difference goes beyond one meter, then what happens? Core temperature start increasing and technically, one term called the delayed attringent formation, DEF. If core temperature goes beyond 75 degree, it is not feasible for <coughs> thermal, good for concrete, for DEF effect. And what will happen if it is a 2 meter thick, we don't have anything, core will go to 80, 90. What will happen to surface? It will try to match the ambient. So it will be 35, 40 or 50. So this gradient is critical in mass concrete. So there are two things. One is the core temperature not beyond 75 degree and gradient should not be more than 20 to 22 degree. How to achieve this? This is one of our, this site of Bendy Bazaar where I have explained 10,000 cubic meter of concrete. We have done cure, cure this uh, curing without water. Seven days no water. What we have done, after initial set, lay the plastic sheet, thermocol of 2 inch was laid for insulation. So what has happened? Core temperature and surface temperature was near matching. Of course, we got a gradient of 10 to 12 degree, which is supposed to be the best. So contractor has done the very good thing to have this thermocol system and then we could control the gradient to 10 to 12 degree. Of course, placing temperature was restricted to 35 degree and we have designed this mix for 56 days strength, not 20 days strength and you will not believe it is a M50 grade concrete with 250 kg of OPC and 350 kg of GGBS. So 60% to 7, in one of the grade, our grade was M40 and we have used 150 kg of cement and 350 kg of GGBS. So what happens, OPC is less, who is generating the heat, OPC, C3A, concrete, C3As, of course, these supplementary cementitious material will act in the secondary hydration. Just before concluding, I will just explain what happens, cement will hydrate and produce calcium hydroxide and calcium silicate, like this, CSH, CHS gel. 
that calcium hydroxide which is a weaker part is consumed by fly ash and GGBS in secondary. So they will start reacting after generation of calcium hydroxide. So that is the reason we get the peak two to three days. We have done very interesting study and I have very good <coughs> presentation on mass concrete of our experience. How we have controlled, almost we use uh, 70 sensors, sacrificial sensors and we estimated the strength. And can you believe our cube strength and in situ strength concrete was way, way different. If we get a cube strength X, 30% of cube, the structure was more in the initial stage. Cube is only 15 centimeter. Hydration is limited to 15 centimeter. Two meter raft, just imagine vibration, hydration. So obviously there is a lot of reaction and there is a scientific way of measurement called as a maturity meter method or maturity meter. Very interesting thing which can, which will be the future rather I will say. Last I will just want to say, don't accept, there is an acceptance criteria but if you get very good strength and very bad finish, it is of no use. So whenever, there are so many reasons of cube failure. One of the reason is mixed design. And you see, just monitor the sequence. We demolished a cube, we are so lethargic, after two days we put in curing. So there are so many ways where we can, you know, uh, disturb the cycle. So I will just say cube test is only, I will never say cube test is the best method. This is one of the sites. Actually, I could not run this video. Just imagine this tacha. Of course, nowadays we are not going in multiple, but when this, see the sound, that sound will tell you whether the concrete is good or bad. If there is a cube failure, I will say two things. Keep that cube. Now our site, we have instruction. Any cube failure, keep it separate. Post-mortem. See whether it is a bond failure, aggregate failure. Go to the structure. How is the structure? And simply cube failure, yes, bad concrete. Or cube is very good, good concrete. It is not like that. You have to see the structure. The other side you can see, M40 grade slab. Next day when they are doing the starter, they have to use drill machine. So according to me, that slab should not have any cube test. If the concrete is hardening on the second day and you have to use drill machine, what else you want? So just to summarize six points. Water cement ratio is important and not cement content for strength of concrete. Admixture plays very important role in high grade concrete because water reduction is very very critical. We must visit the pressure before starting mix design. Curing is most important activity and cannot be neglected. Mass concrete, yes, control on core temperature and differential gradient. And do not conclude quality of structure blindly from cube test register. Never, never. Just go to site because we are so master. I will just, madam, one minute. <laughs> she is looking at me. <laughs> I will just give one example. I went to this uh, Manesar site. They say standard deviation 0.37 M30 grade concrete. And seven days, perfect. 78, 80, 78, 80 percent. And 20 days, 110, 112 percent. So we are so no, the person who is testing or filling the register, he, he knows how much kilonewton reduction should be there. Within three cubes, variation is hardly two, two or three percent. Code allows 15. I said, go up to eight percent. Why you restrict to two percent? If you do manipulation, be smart in that also. Why you want to show 0 0.37 standard deviation? And one of the site in Ghatkopar, almost they reached 20 floor and they have done core at the ground floor, core failed. Then we went for cube test register. Everything, all tests were done at 7 days, 20 days, 7 days, 20 days. Not a single day, day skip. Then we go to 15th August casting. Obviously, 15th August nobody will work. There is no harm to test at 30 days, 29 days, but not a single day. So, and again, they say, no, no, we are testing cement perfectly at site. 
according to me, we are not smart enough to do cement test at site. Because I have seen how that person is gauging cement. If normal consistency is wrong, your cement testing is wrong. And then we say, okay, where are you doing cement testing? That machine was kept on the ground. There was no table to do the gauging. And they say, we are doing cement testing. But every week, cement test register, normal consistency 27.5, initial setting time 200, everything is maintained. So, I always say, we are doing audit, we always say, or whenever our contractor submits this ITP, inspection and test plan, I say, be practical and submit the plan. Because if we have the ha habit of manipulation, we'll do it and we'll never do the single test. At least do once in week, some sieve analysis, absorption, specific gravity, once in 15 days. But be practical, which you can do it. Don't say, no, no, this is the best I will go. Now, simple example. All aggregate trucks, I will check for, no, silt content, sieve analysis. If there are so many trucks coming, we can't do. Then we say, okay, at least test from one source, one supplier. Do some practical way and do it. Otherwise, we will not do anything. So just, I hope, I was in time just to give the thanks. So this is what Skyline I am expecting. There will be change of Skyline in here because this is what we have Falgar. And I am sure a day is not long, we will be, I, there is a, I think Varsova, Virar will be connected with ceiling, lot of projects. Maybe our next generation will see this skyline here. I will share my presentation to organizers, they will share presentation. My WhatsApp number, mail ID, everything is there. You can send me anytime WhatsApp, I will reply within 24 hours. Thank you very much. you because I was in awe with every piece of information that was coming I was enjoying it and that's the only reason I was looking at you just to clarify <laughs> yes all set <laughs> as a token of our appreciation may I call upon engineer Rajiv Kumar to kindly present a memento and gift to engineer Mahesh Tendulkar share the contact of our speakers so you can directly get your questions clarified. With this, we're almost at the end of the event, but not without a special mention to engineer Ganesh Avar. He and his team put in lots of efforts, ideated and pulled a lot of strings to get to this stage. This event is a testament of that. So now I request engineer Ganesh Shunarkar to please come forward and felicitate engineer Ganesh Avar with a memento. but it is not possible without the support of many coming together and putting up a good show. I now request engineer Ganesh Avar to come forward and extend a vote of thanks. On behalf of ISSA, the entire fraternity of institute, first of all, I extend my most sincere thanks to Almighty God for making today's event a resounding success. With his blessing and grace, we were able to make this event what it was. At outset, I thank our speaker, Mr. Mayesh Tendulkar, for a very knowledgeable uh, presentation and Mr. Ma Manish Parekh, sir, for uh, presentation regarding MEP. I also want to thank uh, Paresh Gharat, President, Architect, Engineers Association of Palgar, uh, Dr. Nandadeep Kokne Sahib, President, Association of uh, uh, Consulting Engineers, Palgar Chapter, 
and their support and enthusiasm. I would like to thank our sponsor Algatech Limited for their support. I would also like to thank Engineer Ramnath Samant, Coordinator ISSC for his enthusiastic support. I would like to thank Atiti Inn and their dedicated staff that was always on their toes to help us. I also thank uh, thanks Mr. Manish uh, Nimisha Amnarkar for being the host for tonight. You were amazing. An event like this cannot be happen overnight. The wheel started rolling weeks ago. It required planning and bird of eye for details. We have been fortunate enough to be backed by the team of very proactive and dedicated staff who are well versed in their job. I am short of word for their involvement and their willingness to take on completion of tasks beyond their comfort zone. For this, I thank uh, uh, our president, uh, Shantilal Jain, Hemant Wadalkar, Mansi Nangaukar, uh, engineer Sanjay Naran Sahib, Paresh Unnarkar Sir, Jitendra Hatkar Sahib, Rajesh Edwankar, architect Akash Vijay Gurav Sir, uh, Mr. Sumit, engineer Tanmay, Raju Yogesh, Chira Kiran, Ritesh Patil, Josef Seik, and Vivek Singh. I would also like to thank people who work behind this scene to make this event happen. Our technical management team, stage setting, lighting arrangement team, photographer, catering, and other stuff. With deep sense of appreciation, we thank you for your contribution. Last but not least, the, uh, I would like to thank audience, uh, without which uh, this event wouldn't be possible. Thank you so much for being active listener and sharing your thoughts. We value, your, we value you and your moment that you chose to be with us tonight. Thank you. guests and speakers who shared their valued experiences. I am Nimesha Unnarkar, your host, take your leave. Happy Uttara and happy Makar Sankranti. Thank you, good night, and I request everyone to please move towards dinner. Thank you so much. That's all.